He knew he was dying and he was still fighting cancer, but he was going to take everybody laughing with him. So that still makes me smile. When I was really little and my dad used to play alligator around the bed, I would basically hide on the bed and he would jump up and try to catch me. And that really makes me smile whenever I think about it. Many, many years ago, before my grandfather passed away, he was at a family member's wedding. And even though cancer had already taken away his arm, or most of his arm, he was still out there dancing with my grandmother and they were still having a good time and he was still making people laugh. And to this day, I still remember how he would cut on jokes and, you know, still making people laugh, knowing that he knew he was dying and he was still fighting cancer, but he was gonna take everybody laughing with him. So that still makes me smile. A memory of a loved one would be my father who just passed away about two weeks ago. Uh, he was a musician back in New Jersey, but a memory of him would definitely be, would, a memory of him would definitely be a song that one of my uncles wrote, it's called I Love You. Uh, he recorded it back in 1978, and to this day we still have it on a, on a 45 record, and we transferred it to an MP4 so I can listen and hear him anytime I want. And just hearing him through that song, you can really feel his presence. He had a beautiful voice, and that's certainly something that makes me smile. A memory that makes me smile is um, my sister and my track meets. She used to have a cowbell, <laughs> and she used to braid the cowbell. If you know, if you know about a cowbell, you know that it's really, really loud. <laughs> and she used to braid it to my track meets, and she used to be really loud ringing, <laughs> ringing my cowbell, and that makes me smile. Hey everyone, how's it going? If you're new to this channel, I'm Jordan. I'm the guy behind the camera, and I like creating videos that highlight the beauty of life and the significance of our relationships in it. Normally, I don't answer these questions, but today I'm going to. So a few years back, I had the opportunity to volunteer at an orphanage in South America, and the kids there changed my life. They're so resilient, so amazing. One of my favorite memories is of one of the little girls. Every time that she and I would see each other, I would place her on top of a table, and she would jump into my arms. And every time she would do that, I would place her back on the table and take like a half step back until we got far enough where like, I knew I wouldn't be able to catch her. But we did this enough, so much that I would just be randomly walking past a space that she was in, and she would just go ahead and climb up on something tall and just jump at me, expecting me to catch her. And sometimes like, I mean, I would never let her fall, but like, I wouldn't be paying attention all the time. And, um, you know, reflecting on that just made me realize like, how much she trusted me, like she would just leap from countertops or like the ladders of the monkey bars and just expect me uh, to catch her. And, and that's always a memory that, that I hold dear. A memory of a loved one is my grandma. She was a teacher's aide. And even during school, she would always want to help me with the homework and she would. But even after high school and the college, she would always volunteer to help me with my homework, even though it was past her education level. So it always makes me smile that she always wants to help. Just thinking about like times with my dad growing up, um, when I was younger, he'd always like take us to the Redwoods up in Northern California and go and explore. And like, it always blew my mind just like seeing all the nature and seeing like the scope of the, the fields and like the trees and everything. It's like, it was what I'd never seen before. And it like completely changed my perspective and his love for it totally like bled into me. And like seeing his passion for that was always like something that inspired me. So yeah, that memory always makes me really happy. I had an aunt who was like a third parent who would come to dinner every Wednesday night. And when she would arrive at the door, she would open the door and say, good evening. And then we were all really glad to see her. And she did things with my sister and me that she confessed late in life that she did the things my mother thought my mother ought not do because I should have a certain amount of discipline, but then she would let my aunt do them. And she would take us for, um, she would take us shopping and then we would end up having milkshakes. And I loved her dearly. And all of her nieces and nephews felt like we were her favorite. My dad is a, an immigrant uh, from Bogota and my mom grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. 
um, but it was just like them and my brother and I. Um, so having my dad be an immigrant, we didn't really like have roots in our city. So they were always about exploring. And whenever I get to go to other places or talk to my friends about these little Sunday trips we'd make up to Kenosha, Wisconsin, just to go get out of the house and try some new food or see some a strip mall and never buy anything. But it was these car rides where we'd listen to music and we would just get out and be with each other as a family. Like, just makes me feel warm inside. Definitely my roommate who I'm here with today, um, moving into our first college dorm ever. Um, <laughs> first time living away from home with someone else and it was a very nerve-wracking experience and both of us when we finally had the bravery to talk to each other we both realized we were suffering from the same anxiety and so we laugh about it each time we're together that for us to be so close now uh, and be worried so much about each other when we first were moving into uh, the dorms. When I first met my cat um, I was about to go to school and my cat my mom bought my car and I was happy. I would say singing musicals and just Broadway show tunes with my family, especially my dad and my sister, just around the house growing up. The memory for me would be of my father before he died. He would tell me a joke about the graveyard. <laughs> it sounds kind of weird, but he would say, he would ask me, um, how many dead people do you think are out there? And I would say like, oh, well, Dad, maybe a hundred. And he said, um, well, I think all of them are dead. <laughs> so that was cool for me. He told that joke to me, and that became my favorite joke. Cause he's my best friend. And, and we uh, miss him a lot. We miss him a lot. Mm -hmm. When I think about my wife and share time with her, that makes me really happy. We can go somewhere, walk around and only feel happy. I am happily in a relationship, but right now we're apart. We're apart. What gets me through this is the one time that we accidentally shared together. I wasn't supposed to be there. I dropped her off in Atlanta and I missed my bus. And the whole entire time we were always around others. So because I missed my bus, I was able to spend time with her. So I. Pretty much, I got an Airbnb, and we had the best night ever. It was a great night. One-on-one, -on -one, it was just us. And right now, that's my happy place that I go to.